Good morning, Keith here. I am without Angela on this trip in Branson, Missouri. Today, I am with family as we are here at, as you can see in the background behind me, Dogwood Canyon. Every time we come here, we make it a point to visit this place. It's really cool. We're gonna be taking a tram ride today throughout the canyon, seeing elk and bison, enjoying bison burgers at the restaurant, checking out the museum and the nature trail, and all kinds of sights here. If you ever come to Branson, you need to come out and see this place. Is a real working mill on occasion when they do demonstrations. Imagine the talented glass works to do that. Step out here, enjoy the waterfall. Everybody comes out here for photographs. to rent bicycles. You can rent bikes, ride the trail all the way out there, even go into Arkansas. Really nice. I'm here with family today. Parents, they don't ride bicycles, so we were, won't be doing that today, just doing the tram. This here is the restaurant where later today we will be eating bison burgers. They're delicious. And the tram ride will give us a good glimpse into what all's in the canyon. A lot of Indian artifacts. A stag moose skeleton. Yeah. 
And here is the restaurant, which will be open later. Bike rentals over here. Treehouse we'll go up in and look at in a minute. Stairs and take a look at this museum right here above the gift shop. There's the map of the entire canyon. We'll be riding a tram back there. Right back in there, to the nature preserve, where only the train goes. I don't know what we have in here. Alligator snapping turtle. Find him. There he is. There, burrowed under the rock. Over here we've got skulls. Size of a bald eagle's a nest. This 
snake skin. And of course the snake. Inside that log, it's hard to see with the glare. And you can kind of see him coiled in there. Right here is where you catch the tram to ride through the canyon. We'll be doing that shortly. And there's a little tree house up here you can go explore with a bridge that leads over to the museum area we just were. You can ride these trails all the way back through the canyon. It's all paved. The only place you can't go on a bicycle or walking is in the nature preserve area that's gated off where there's elk and bison. Uh, that's for trams only, like I said. But you're free to walk out here as far as you want to walk. There's a chapel. A lot of people use it for a wedding. It's like a log cabin type of chapel. Uh, there's some spots that we'll stop along the way on the tram where you can get out, take pictures, and video, and we'll do all that. But you're free to walk there. Your general admission includes walking as far as you want to walk. The parking lot is very empty today. I mean, I've been here many times and I don't think I have ever seen it that empty. We did have quite a bit of rain yesterday, it was chilly. It's about 50 degrees today, but even then, I would have expected it to be busier. Granted, it is only about 11.15 a.m., so it will probably pick up. They built one of the tree houses, not an area, four of the they built before. This one is built like a little dark house. This is those steps have been built from a different wood that can be found all over the Ozark Mountain. They have little brass plates on them to tell you what you're standing on. And on the back side are 103 bird houses. I found it in my side. Over here on our left, you're going to see Indian Cliff Falls. <laughs> At a height of 150 feet, it's the tallest falls here in the park. There's a mezzanine over there where you can go and get your pictures taken right by the falls. If you guys haven't had a chance to do that yet, you can go through the restaurant, through the museum, and on the back side of the grist mill, there's a door that will lead you out to those falls. Next up, you're going to see a crevice here in the rock wall where we found four caves. In one of those caves, we found an Esco burial bundle with a 35-year-old male and four children found in that burial bundle. This is Little Indian Creek we're rolling along now, part of three streets we have in the park. We have Fox Creek back on and this is the only no parking. And in front of us is going to be Dogwood Creek, which we'll be rolling along for three quarters of our journey today. Over here on our left, you're going to see one of our dams here in the park. We call these dams weirs. A weir is where the water pulls up behind the dam and eventually spills out over the top. This creates a super oxygenated environment for our rainbow trout. If we're able to stock our rainbow trout with the water, we come from our 32 springs here in the park. The water comes out of those at about 50 degrees, which keeps our water rate from ever being hotter than 65, even in the hottest parts of the summer. As we come across our first of our walking bridges, we're going to notice some iron ones here on the bridge. This one has sets of safety in there. Most of our walking bridges have some special matching. You're the first to come to me and tell me about that non matching bridge. You win the no prize prize. Looks like you guys are a little upset about that bridge. On the first two, I'll let you know there is a picture of working on the bridge. These 
12 by 12 came out of the center of the not the first the one day the 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 This is what we're back to after we got some of these tools at the Alma Fork on the river. As you guys are exploring out back, you're going to see some double doors that lead out of that reception hall and make that into a dance hall out back. The biggest reason I stop everybody here is to talk about these steps on the left that have been hewn at different heights. I just ask you to use the handrails on the way down, and if you got little ones, please hold their hands on the way down. I love to talk about these full width and length poles. This one runs the width of the building, one directly outside, three back by the exit door. And then above and below these windows on each side are these full length poles that run the length of this space. really cool chapel said they have a lot of weddings here pretty much what it's for I think because of this unique feeding frenzy they go into and we feed them here this is just half the show on this side if you guys will look off on the other side you're gonna see that some of my food makes it gone and as it does, the fish that are down here will fight over the littlest bits of food that make it over to the sky. Look at them, take it off already down there. Now that we've given you guys a chance to calm down, you can see some of the larger ones sitting up here towards the tops of the water. I'm going to give you guys a chance to feed them a little later on. But instead of throwing whole handfuls like you watched me do earlier, you can get quite a bit of joy out of throwing one or two pieces at a time. These fish shoot right up to the tops of the water, just like they would if a fly or an insect hits the tops of the water. They can actually jump three, uh, two, three, even four inches above the water surface to catch from those insects. I don't know about you guys, but I spent a lot of time with a fly swatter. That's pretty impressive. I'm gonna get them going one more time for us before we get in there. Okay, you guys are ready. Here we go. Ooh, boy, he got them tough. I'm thinking of popping that question today. If you can wait until the end of our tour, just in case of a negative outcome. <laughs> it's easier to deal with 15 minutes of uncomfortableness than an hour and 45. <laughs> Next up is eye level crossing. It's going to be fogged here at eye level for about 5 to 10 seconds. Don't forget your cameras out. Focus them over here on the right. We'll do our best to get you guys some pictures here at eye level before we leave. I could probably use some help from you guys in the very, very back, and I'm going to show everybody to get rid of it. Is that hard enough for you guys in the very back seat? This is our last stop on the tram tour. After this, it doesn't stop anymore until we're done. This place is really cool. You can walk up there on that waterfall, and take pictures and look around. go up there and walk this little bridge.
monsters right over that bridge. Oh yeah? Monsters, I guess he's talking about some trout. I always like this bridge right here. Yeah, there they are. I don't know if you can see them. Blue water, they're kind of hard to see on camera. So it kind of goes under there a little bit. We definitely had rain overnight, and as we did, you can see all that water coming off the cliff. Yep. It's probably raining like that for about a day or two. <coughs> My dad should get you guys on the place. Slow movements, slow and controlled. Even if you need to stand up, do it in a slow and controlled way. Strut was our dominant in here for six years, all by himself. If you ever want to tell Strut from the rest of them, the easiest way to do so is if you look on his uh, left yeah. side antler, he's got a singular long drop tine. It looks like an L that's been laid down on its side. And then on his right side, He's got a secondary drop tine. They kind of look like fingers because they're so close together, kind of curled up a little bit. Looking at these animals right away, you might assume that their anatomy would be closer to that of a deer, but it's actually closer to that of cattle or other ruminants. They eat up this grass, that grass grows down into one stomach, then they cough that back into their mouth and do something called chewing the cud, where they re chew up that grass to go down into a second stomach. It would also be easy to assume that they'd have two sets of teeth like us, but they really have one set all along. And what's up top is this hard palate that they scrape their teeth up against to be able to eat up this grass. Imagine that like a, a super hard leather. If you guys want to see it happening, you see this guy's not reaching down to the ground, but he's just a chewing. That's what he's doing. He's chewing the cut. They're also one of the three locations in the world where you can find the chemical makeup for ivory. They've got two spots in their mouth that look like teeth, but hunters know these are pieces of ivory. And uh, let's just say a hunter is trying to harvest one of these animals for the meat, which some of our larger bulls can actually reach about 700 pounds. That's a lot of meat for your families. They'll carry a pair of pliers with them just to pluck those two pieces out because that ivory can be worth so much. I brought something kind of cool for you guys to see. I brought one of our sheds. For you guys here in the front row, I want you to reach out and feel the very porous nature of this bone where they drop that off every year and regrow it. For everybody else, I'm going to come down one side. Please make your way over in each row so everybody gets a chance to feel this. Isn't that cool? Our bison first, because of the position they're in, and then we'll go on from that to talk about the other two. One of the biggest reasons I choose that is that we go on the amongst this group is our dumb kidney. 
way of the in general, the group is yet to the black group on his head. It's, it's mostly black all over. He's got some fur up on the shoulders, it's not necessarily black. But Ninja is our dominant out there. Over on our white, you can on our right, you can see our white bikes that's shoved right up there on the hay, trying to get his best on the little bit of hay that's up there. These animals are crazy physically active, he says as half of them are sitting down. They can run 30 to 35 miles an hour, faster than a horse. And at a full run, they can jump six feet over a fence. Mr. Morris found this out the hard way when he brought some up here. He also took some up to his nature golf course. The point was for those animals to eat off all the tall grasses in the back. Mr. Morris and his associates left that night, came back the next day, and found those animals over that six foot fence. In nature, that they'll forget to sleep, forget to eat. They do nothing but keep this hair on this group of ladies together. They can lose 80 to 190 pounds during rut season, and this will kill off 97% of these dominant males. That sounds extreme, but that's the way nature has it. As that male has done his job, spread his DNA throughout the herd. Next year, a younger male steps up into that position and does the exact same thing. Keeping that herd refreshed. A new year in and year out. Up at the top, when we were talking about Junior and some of the other males, I told you that he was the dominant for six years by himself. In the two years after, Junior stepped in one year, and the other year was JJ. I think JJ's up there with the rest of them. Uh, they stepped in, and and Strut was fine to just back off. He'd had six years by himself. And this is a pretty big feat when they uh, keep this grouping of ladies. Less so here in captivity, which is the reason we were able to keep him for so many years. However, we do not harvest any of our harvest any elk that you eat in our restaurants that does not come from us or from Mr. Morris's property in the same way it doesn't come from our own property. Uh -oh. He's like that challenge in old ninja. A lot of people don't believe that he is 2400 pounds. Yeah, when you look at him beside the other ones he looks very bony. That's because his bones are longer, uh, thicker, and they're actually more dense than the other two animals. They, all these animals eat this supplemental food. I'm sorry, I don't have to say this, but we're going to get pretty close to this female. So please, do not reach out to her. recognize certain things. Uh, they can see that this is a tram just like a lot of the trams they've seen come through here. And I probably look just like every other tram driver, even though you guys can tell I have a much different shape. Those are fun stuff. Just like other rainbow stuff. They just have a different stigma everywhere else. Because of this lack of camouflage, it makes them very easy to be eaten out, eaten off by other predators. Um, they, we have fox and mink that will come out here and just have a smorgasbord on these animals during the different times of the year. These animals are much more rare than the white bison I showed you earlier. They come from that single mutation found in a single female in 1955. Their lineage has all come from that one singular female and have been kept as novelty fish because fishermen love to fish for them. It's so easy to see them in the water and know exactly where to cast them. I talked to a guy that used to fish for him. He said, I don't know. He said, that sounds right. But he said, these animals see you way before. And that was our fun-filled but chilly day at Dogwood Canyon. Probably about a 30 to 45 minute drive from Branson, but well worth it. Afterwards, we enjoyed some bison burgers at the restaurant, which I highly recommend. And in fact, the next time you're in Branson, or if you've never been before and you go, I strongly recommend you take some time to go visit Dogwood Canyon.